Hello guys and welcome to part 12 of my rock creation uh, series. Um, in this video um, I'm gonna start uh, baking normal maps and AO maps and before I do that I want to open up uh, this um, this page here. Uh, I had this open in, in one of the previous videos. Um, but it's, I uh, wanted to emphasize uh, the importance of this. You might remember um, me mentioning something about uh, the Swizzle coordinates system, where Unreal uses um, Y minus and um, CBrush per default, I think, use uh, C, uh, Y plus. Um, but uh, another thing is uh, tangent basis. Um, um, normally when you see these bluish uh, maps uh, it's going to be a tangent basis um, a normal map and um, since I've been working with uh, Unreal Engine 4 uh, primarily focusing on animations and transformations in, in world space to component space when I read this, it actually made a little bit more sense than it has been doing uh, up until now. Uh, so when I, for example, uh, look at this, it's um, it says um, they use a kind of vertex data called tangent basis. So similar to UV coordinates, except uh, it provides directionality across the surface um, um, to create uh, um, the correct lightning. Uh, lighting. Um, so um, it is also it's also has some um, good information saying here. Um, it contain it uh, con consists of uh, the vertex normal, uh, which is influenced by smoothing. Uh, and remember that the talk I had about smoothing groups and the vertex tangent. Um, derived from the V texture coordinate and a bitangent. Um, so um, yeah, it's worth uh, looking through this information, although it might not be something you want to revisit again later on, because uh, eventually more of this is going to make sense uh, as you learn uh, more about this. Uh, but it's a really great resource to look in, uh, through. Um, also, uh, they have a um, page on ambient occlusion maps, what they are used for. And as it says here, it's, it has a nice um, definition up here at the top. It's a way of creating soft shadowing, as if a model was uh, lit without a direct light source. Um, so it's uh, something we want to create, basically. Um, but I'm going to put a link to the this also in the description to this video. So let's go ahead and uh, create some maps in ZBrush first. So um, I'm going to be making a set of maps in ZBrush, and I'm also going to be making a set of maps in a program called XNormal. Um, but I think I'm going to do that in a separate video uh, afterwards. So for uh, ZBrush, you can. Uh, do this by going to C plugin and find um, multi map exporter, and that's what I have opened up over here. And here you can check various maps that you want to export. So I just export a normal map and an ambient occlusion map, and you just need to select the size of this map. It's basically just a, a picture. Um, and you can select how much map border, uh, which is, I believe, what people also refer to as gutter padding. Um, and then you can decide to flip uh, the maps vertically. And you want to flip this one, um, have it uh, on, like here, um, because otherwise uh, things are going to look weird if, when you put it into it. It's going to flip, it's going to be flipped uh, around the y axis, and you going to need to do it manually in a photo editing program like Photoshop. 
Um, so under uh, export options, um, if you check file names, uh, it says it's going to uh, append whatever file name we give it, uh, like DM for displacement map and NM for normal and AO. So you can change these uh, things to be appended uh, in here. And um, you can, uh, there are uh, separate uh, settings for each of these um, maps here. So for example, the normal map here, you can say you want to export this in tangent space. And obviously you want to do that. Otherwise you would get it in world uh, space and the world space uh, normal maps are kind of like a rainbow color colored. Um, but you want the blue guy. Uh, so keep tangent on and basically just keep all these on. Um, so it didn't really change anything. I'm not entirely sure what, how this affects that generation, if it's going to be more rough or more, more precise, depending on uh, what sub level I set this to, um, might have to look into this, but for now, I'm just going to keep it a one. Um, and if we take a look at the ambient occlusion map, uh, these are the settings. Uh, I don't think I touched anything. Um, so this is just how it's going to be. Um, since I'm generating a map, uh, fairly, uh, of a fairly, uh, big size, um, to comparison, uh, the open world demo project, uh, uses maps for the rocks of about, uh, of, uh, 8,100, whatever. Um, pixels so it's about twice this size so while it's not huge it's uh, still pretty big so when I create maps uh, I get to decide uh, what name I want to give it and you, as you can see I already did a test render for this um, so I'm just gonna call it test boulder 03 um, and then just hit the save and this is going to take some time. Uh, well, the normal map is usually going to be pretty quick to generate, but the AO map usually takes quite a long time. So you can expect something for this size here, uh, something around 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. So um, I'm not going to bore you guys to death. So I'm going to pause the video here and I'm going to see you when it's done. Okay, and it's done. And I opened up the maps in uh, Photoshop. And as we can see, we have a nice normal map here. And um, we also have a, a nice uh, ambient occlusion map here. Um, so that's how they look. Um, so actually, uh, I'm going to save these as uh, for comparison, uh, since I'm going to try and do this also in um, X normal. So um, I'm going to close these up and um, then I'm going to take this into X normal uh, in the next video and show how we do that. So uh, stay tuned for that and see you in the next. Bye bye.